In the next 30 minutes, I'm gonna show you everything I did to find this direct shipper load when I only had one truck. I'm being dead serious. I'm gonna expose my entire system in this video and show you how much money you can make with these contracts, where and how I find direct shipper loads, and more importantly, how I was able to convince shippers to work with me when I only had one truck. I'm not joking when I say this, if you're in the trucking industry, this is the most important video you'll watch all year. You know, I've seen people build seven figure trucking companies just using this information that I'm about to give away for free. All I ask in return is that you take a second right now and like the video, subscribe to the channel and just watch the whole video to the end. That's it. Just give me the next 30 minutes of your time and I promise you will never have to use another load board again. So with that being said, Let's just jump right into the training and start off by covering the basics. So what are direct shipper loads and why do you need them? Simply put, a direct shipper load is exactly what the name implies. You know, it's a load agreement between you, the trucking company and your customer, which is a shipper. So for example, if the shipper is paying $3,000 for a load, all of that money is going to go straight to you, you know, pretty straightforward. Now, it seems like that this would be the obvious way to run a trucking business, but over 98% of trucking companies don't operate this way. Instead, most trucking companies have someone in the middle called a freight broker that takes on average 15 to 25% of the load revenue that shippers provide, and they don't guarantee you any type of loads. This is a huge problem for trucking companies, especially when spot rates plummet and fuel prices hit new record highs kind of like what happened not too long ago. Now, I want to make something very, very clear at the start. Freight brokers play a really, really important role in the trucking industry, and not all freight brokers are out there to scam you. You know, I know truckers like to hate on them, but let's be honest, most truckers wouldn't be able to find any loads if it wasn't for these freight brokers. However, it doesn't mean that you have to solely rely on these freight brokers like a lifeline, you know? Again, I'm not here to make freight brokers the enemy. I'm just trying to show you guys how to be self-sufficient and make more money by finding direct shipper loads. And you can do that by using the LOAD method. The LOAD method is something that our company came up with and it stands for Leverage, Opportunity, Acquisition and Deliver. And it's by far the most effective method in securing direct shipper loads. Let me break it down for you and I'll start off with the first and most important step, which is leverage. This is where 90% of rookie owner operators fail. You know, they'll watch one or two outdated YouTube videos and then they waste their time dropping off carrier packets with no response. You know, no shipper is ever gonna work with you if you do this because they have all the leverage and you're offering them nothing. Think about it for a second. As a trucking company, you're competing against freight brokers and mega carriers for the shipper's business. You can't just hand in a boring carrier packet to the receptionist and hope that they'll want to work with you. You know, you're not going to be the biggest company that approaches them. You're not going to be the most experienced and you're definitely not going to be the most technologically advanced. So how can you build leverage? How can a small trucking company build any type of leverage? Well, it all starts by asking yourself a simple question. What can I offer to make this a no brainer for the shipper? As I already told you guys, the best way to make a no brainer offer to a shipper is to provide a lot of freight capacity at the cheapest rate. But you as a small trucking company can't do that. However, there are a lot of ancillary problems that you can solve and offers you can make that the big companies can't and won't. For example, here's a list I made on the back of a napkin paper before reaching out to the shipper that I ended up signing. And by the way, I recommend you do the exact same thing. Make a list of all the problems a shipper might face and how you can solve them. And as you can see, that's exactly what I did. Generally, what most shippers want is freight capacity, on-time delivery, freight damage reduction, load tracking, high tender acceptance rate, uh, low risk or no contract, and of course, competitive rates. You can list out a lot, lot more than that if you're creative, but generally speaking, 
Those are the main things a shipper is going to look for in their freight partner. Now, obviously, you can't solve every single problem on this list. Well, at least not by yourself. You know, if you could, you probably wouldn't be watching this video. But what you can do is create a mix of high value, low effort tasks and package them together into an insane offer to build some leverage. Here's what I mean. So before I went to go talk to the shipper that I ended up working with, these were the five things that I picked to focus on. I was going to guarantee on time delivery for the duration of the trial, which we later decided with the shipper was going to be 60 days. Um, I was going to also guarantee a 100% tender acceptance rate for the trial period for this specific route at this specific price range. You know, so there's a lot of conditions there. Um, I was also going to offer competitive rates again based on the route that I was familiar with. So I knew what brokers were paying me and how much they were making on top of that. So that's how we came up with the price. And finally, during the trial period, I was not going to push them to sign any contingent direct shipper contract with me and lock themselves in with us. You know, we would only run dedicated routes for them whenever they had extra loads available for the first 60 days after the trial run. They had the option to either extend a year long contract or just tell us to get lost. Simple. Now, guys, just think about how much leverage I've built up in this conversation by focusing on the ancillary problems that a shipper faces and doubling down on them with crazy guarantees and taking away all the risk. You know, I, I actually took this a step further and I agreed to pay a $250 fee anytime we didn't follow through on any of our guarantees. The only way this works is if you're actually a solid trucking company with great drivers. The driver working this route was my brother, so I knew I could trust him to deliver on the crazy promises that I had made. However, as we started expanding and started working with more and more shippers, I had to rely on my truck drivers and give them an incentive to perform. You know, it turns out when you offer your truck drivers a pretty good deal for the hard work that they do, they'll they'll get the job done. Now, here's a bonus tip for you. If you want to get really creative and solve the main problem, the freight capacity problem, you can actually just partner up with a small to mid sized brokerage to do so. That way, when you go to a shipper and they ask how much capacity can you provide, you can say something like, hey, I can guarantee one, two, three trucks for this lane every single week. And if you need more capacity than that, we have a third party brokerage company that can handle all that. Now, not only do I add another point of leverage to close the deal, I can also make a percentage on each load that I hook the brokerage company up with. You know, that's that's huge. You know, I'm dropping crazy value for you guys, and we're not even halfway through this video. So hope you guys are enjoying it anyways. This is exactly what I have started doing now. You know, instead of applying for a brokerage license, I'm choosing to partner with a mid sized brokerage company because shippers don't really like seeing trucking companies with a brokerage license. You know, that's because there's a chance that you might sign a contract with them with your trucking company. But since you have a brokerage license, you can just go ahead and double broker this load to someone else and they don't want to take that type of risk anyways. Now that you've built up your leverage and you know what to offer and how to pitch it, the next step in the LOAD method is finding the opportunity. Listen, guys, you can have the best offer in the world, but if you're reaching out to shippers like Amazon or Walmart that have their own private fleets and they move tens of thousands of loads a day, you're just going to be wasting your time. The best way to find opportunities is to mimic what you're already doing. Think about that for a second. Most of you watching this video already have a truck, which means you're probably booking loads right now from a load board. So just think about how you find loads on a load board. Think about the parameters that you set when booking loads. You know, you put in a origin city, which is the city that your business is operating out of, and you give the load board a radius to search in. Typically, it's 50 to 60 miles. So when I started looking for direct shipper loads, I did the exact same thing. I started off in my city and gave myself a parameter of 50 miles to look in. Now, instead of searching on the internet and trying to find potential shippers in random pockets of the US that I've never operated in, 
I started looking locally first and then expanded outwards from there. You know, it's, it's much, much easier to find shippers like this and it gives you a much higher chance of landing a direct shipper contract if you're also a locally based trucking company. Again, that's just another point of leverage. So now that you know what area to start looking in, you obviously need to find the right companies to reach out to. But before you do that, there's something very important you need to do that most trucking companies miss. The problem with cold outreach is that you're going to drive to dozens of different shippers and call another dozen every single day. You know, it's going to be really, really hard to keep track of what each shipper said or what they're looking for or if they were interested when you talk to them, blah, blah, blah. You know, there's just a lot of information and data to keep in your head. So before you start looking for shippers to work with, you need to build a shipper tracking spreadsheet like this. This is what I built in order to track who I'm talking to, when I last talked to them, how we communicated, what we talked about, what I provided them, and much, much more. As you can see, it's just a simple spreadsheet that I built with some formulas in it. If you want to use my spreadsheet and download it for yourself, you can go to www.guilt22.com slash templates and click download now to get it for free. But guys, do that after you're done watching this video, not right now, because I need to show you how I found the direct shipper that I ended up working with. After I built my spreadsheet, the very first thing I did was look at all the brokers that I was taking loads from off of load boards. Big brokerages like TQL and Coyote, they typically work with big customers. So I knew with those shippers, I probably wouldn't have a high chance of working with the shipper directly. However, there were plenty of small to mid-sized brokerages that we had accepted loads from. You know, these brokerages aren't working with Nestle and Pepsi, they're working with other small to mid-sized shippers. These are the shippers that you want to target first. And the reason for that being, A, it's easier to get in contact with a shipping manager. B, the offer you're gonna pitch is actually going to be valuable for them. And C, you already know that they offer lanes you want to run because you have experience running similar lanes for them. These are the shippers that you have the highest chance of converting into long-term customers, guys. Now, before all the brokers get mad at me in the comments, I need to make something very, very clear. Typically, when you accept a load from a broker and you sign a contract with them, in that contract, they usually have some sort of non-compete clause where they say that you can't contact the shipper directly for this specific lane. However, you can still reach out to the shipper and work with them directly on other similar lanes that they offer. And you can use proof of your past performance running loads for them as another piece of leverage in your negotiation. Obviously, each broker agreement is different, so talk to a legal advisor before you do anything. You know, nothing I say in these YouTube videos is legal or financial advice. I just wanna make that very, very clear. Also, if you were a really scummy trucking company, and you knew that it's really, really hard for these brokers to track down if you're trying to solicit their shipper for the same lane that they gave you, you maybe could get away with it. I don't know. But personally, I run a big business, so I don't want to mess around with these contracts or lawsuits. Also, I respect the effort that brokers have to put in to get these loads themselves. So I just stay away from doing that type of stuff. There's a there's many ways to get direct shipper loads. You don't have to do anything illegal. Anyways, back to what I was saying. Refer to the previous loads you've run and write the names of all the shippers on your tracking spreadsheet. Before you pick up the phone and start calling, you need to have a list of at least 100 shippers that you've worked with and that you've had a positive experience with. So shippers that load fast, pay fast, are easy to contact, etc. You know, list, list at least 100 to start with. You know, the more the better. If you're struggling to reach that number, that's when you can start using tools like Google Maps or the DAT directory to find more shippers nearby. And as you're writing down these shipper names, you'll also want to use LinkedIn to find the people working there, specifically anyone with the job title of shipping manager, logistics manager, maybe even the plant manager, you know, anyone that can give you a yes or no answer. You don't want to be talking to the receptionist. You want to talk directly with the decision maker. That's very important. All right, so when you have your list of 100 to 200 shippers, 
that's when you can finally move on to the next step of the LOAD method, which is acquisition. In the acquisition phase, you're finally going to start reaching out to the list of shippers that you've compiled and start closing some deals. Now, there are a lot of forms of cold outreach that you can choose from, but this right here is the most effective method I've developed to secure contracts. And as you can see, it all starts with the carrier packet. Now, most carriers just include the bare minimum in their carrier packet, like their insurance certificate, uh, MC certificate, and a W-9, you know, that's it. If you're doing that, just know that you're wasting a golden opportunity to pitch your story, and most importantly, your offer. With every carrier packet that you create, you need to include a branded cover letter that explains what you do, where you operate, and what you're going to do for the shipper. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, just something simple and straight to the point where someone can read it and understand right away what value you're bringing to the table. I also like to leave a few testimonials from other shippers or brokers at the bottom of the page so they know that you're a reputable company. Obviously, don't forget to put your name, email, and number somewhere on that cover letter because a lot of trucking companies miss that. Anyways, when you have your carrier packet optimized, that's when you can start driving around to these shippers and meeting with the shipping managers of each company and pitching them your offer. I typically do in-person meetings first instead of trying to do cold calls because in my experience, it gives you a much better chance to have a longer conversation, which in turn will probably help you close more deals too. In these meetings, I basically just pull up to the shipper's location unannounced and ask the receptionist at the front desk if they can show me where the shipping manager's office is. If they ask why, I explain that I have a carrier packet that I need to drop off and I need to talk to them about a load we delivered. By saying it like that, I basically frame myself as someone the shipping manager has done business with and someone they would probably want to talk to without lying to the receptionist. You definitely don't want to lie guys because that's the fastest way to lose business and get off on the wrong foot. Now, if you can't meet them at their own office, I usually just try to book an appointment with them right then and there. However, if sometimes they'll come down to the lobby instead, and at that point, you just gotta give a quick 60 second pitch and ask them if you can start off on a trial run of dedicated routes. You know, it's, it's a lot harder to get them to have a longer conversation right then and there. So you just have to make it quick and simple and get their email address so you can follow up with them later. That being said, I always try to close them right then and there on the first in-person meeting. However, most of the time, the shipper will tell you they need more time or they'll straight up say no, which is much better than getting a maybe, in my opinion. If they're on the fence and they're saying things like, oh, I still need more time or we'll keep you in consideration, blah, blah, blah. That's when I ask the shipping manager for his email and start following up with them once or twice a week. In these follow-up emails, I'll just make the same points I made in my pitch and just send the shipping manager some proof of my drivers delivering loads for other happy customers. Or I'll just send them reviews from other shippers and brokers that we've worked with and try to get another in-person meeting scheduled. Now, I know most of you don't have any sort of sales training or experience, and quite frankly, I think most of you probably hate sales, which I totally understand. However, in order to run a profitable business, you need to learn new skills that might make you uncomfortable. And sales is just one of them. Real quick, let's just recap what you know so far. So far, you know what to offer and who to offer it to. What you don't know is how to offer it or how to pitch it to a shipper. That's where the closer framework comes in. When you're first talking to a shipper, you want to clarify what problem they're facing. And you do this by asking questions. Questions like, hey, what are your biggest pain points? Uh, what are you currently struggling with? Are you happy with the rate your broker is charging you? Et cetera, et cetera. You need to clarify why the shipper is there and what they need your help with. You know, this is key to making sure that you're both on the same page so that you're not trying to solve a problem that they don't really care about. The next step is labeling the problem. So something like, hey, based on our conversation, it seems like you're struggling with freight damage, tender acceptance, and getting competitive rates. Am I correct? You're labeling them with the problems that they've confessed to you in the clarify stage. You know, the, the shipper needs to admit that they have a problem so they can't backtrack later and say, actually, you know what? We don't need your help because 
what you're offering us can't really help us. After label comes the overview stage. So after you've made the problems clear, you need to find out what the shipper has already tried and what has and hasn't worked. After the overview, it's time to sell the vacation. You know, this is why the shipper is giving you the time of day. They're looking for results. This is where you pitch your offer and tell them how you can solve the specific problems that they've already mentioned. You don't need to dive into all the details of how you're going to do it. You just need to explain what benefit they'll get by working with you. You know, just keep it very high level and focus on the benefits that they're going to receive. After you've made the pitch, you're going to ask for a commitment from them right then and there, you know, either a contract or a dedicated route, whatever it is, you need to make that ask after you sell the vacation. However, most of the time when you ask, the shipper is going to have objections or concerns. And that's where the next step comes in, which is explain, you know, you need to explain away all of their concerns. And this step is all about getting past their nose and reasons for not working with you. Obviously, guys, it can be really uncomfortable to hear someone say no to you. But shippers typically have valid concerns of why you know they don't want to switch to you. Going through the step will help you reassure the shipper that you actually have a solution for them. I've gotten so used to the objections, guys, that at this point, unless they straight up tell me no, I continue to overcome their objections because I'm confident that they could benefit from working with us. If you don't believe in your own trucking company and what you do, you'll have a really tough time trying to convince other people to believe in you. All right, so hopefully at this point, they've either given you a yes or no answer. If it's a maybe, then you ask for the email, keep following up with them, and maybe set up another in-person meeting a month later to pitch them again. If it's a yes, that's when the last step of the closer framework comes in, which is reinforce. When the shipper signs you on, they're immediately going to start questioning if they made the right decision. You know, did they, did they make the right decision? Did they waste money? Questions like that. You want to reinforce the decision that they made so they feel good about themselves and their agreement to work with you. This actually also brings me to the last step of the LOAD method, which is deliver. You're not only going to deliver on your promises and guarantees on the first few days, but on every interaction that you have with them forever. Each time you pick up a load for them, you deliver, you communicate, you invoice. Every time you interact with the shipper, your service has to act as a constant reinforcement that they made the right decision and they need to continue working with you. In my experience, the first 90 days are crucial. You know, it's within the first 90 days that people make a decision if they made a good or bad choice, especially in a service industry like trucking. In the first 90 days, your delivery rate has to be 100%. You have to clearly communicate and provide freight tracking. You or your drivers have to utilize defensive driving to minimize the chance of freight damage. You have to offer personal touches, such as a small gift card or a company shirt to the logistics manager. Basically, you have to go above and beyond to make a solid impression in those 90 days. The quality of your service delivery is the most important part of your business that you need to focus on. And that's what's going to help you get direct shipper loads. I know all of this sounds really hard, but think about what you're doing all this for. If you land one direct shipper contract, you can make up to $100,000 more every single year and have guaranteed work. But at the end of the day, if you can't deliver a great service, you'll never find direct shipper contracts and you'll always have to rely on the load board for business. Speaking of which, if you want to know why load prices are so low right now, go watch this video where I explain who's to blame and how long these low rates might last. So with that being said, I hope this video was useful for you guys and you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comments below. But anyways, thank you so much for watching you guys and I'll see you in the next video.